Good evening and welcome coiners of all types from across the globe. I'm your host, Chip Chodler, and welcome to the 6 o'clock Crypto Evening News, where we uncover the dirty laundry, just like that tube sock behind your bed frame you found when you moved out for college, if you know what I'm saying. Not this time. Oh, I do. I do. I'm sorry. Guilty as charged. <laughs> God, you're so big, it hurts. I know. I can't help it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give, oh, it yeah. Me, Give it to me, Daddy. Give it to me, Daddy. Give it to me, Daddy. Our first topic is regarding crypto Twitter personality. A Pampliano, Pampliano, Pampliano. Oh, wait. Pampliano. And his podcast interview with CEO of Binance Exchange, CZ. Yes, good old Pomp sat down with the devil himself and had an hour-long chat. Maybe just talk about some of the stuff you did before uh, you started Binance? Sure, sure. So, um, uh, so I was born in China, uh, went to Canada when I was a teenager, uh, did high school in, and uh, college in Canada. And then uh, I worked in Tokyo, uh, New York, uh, and then Hong Kong, Shanghai, and now everywhere. So that kind of gave you the sort of where I travel kind of background. Um, I've always been a, uh, I used to be a programmer. Uh, 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 don't think I heard so many uhs in my life in one single interview. Jeffy from Crank Yankers would be proud. Jeffy, <coughs> how are you doing? <coughs> you okay, sweetie? <coughs> I'm a kangaroo. Well, Pompliano put together the worst interview I have ever heard in my life. Brown nosing and pushing out some downright lies. Let's listen to old Pomp kiss some booty. Some sleazy booty. You know, as you and I have talked more and spent a little bit of time together uh, in Singapore, that I think I was surprised is um, your approach to a lot of the decisions you make, uh, not only are one rational and, and obviously um, you're a smart guy who, who a lot of people believe in, you'd be able to build this, you know, uh, fairly large company, but also your approach to regulation is quite sober, right? You, you aren't kind of storming the hill, if you will, uh, with pitchforks, right? You, you, you're saying, look, what are the rules there? Let's try to operate within those rules um, and, and understand that old kind of, um, you know, the historic kind of frameworks that have been applied to uh, some of this stuff may not be perfect, but let's do as little as we can to disrupt that, right? Let, let, let's not try to step on toes. Let's not try to kind of piss people off um, or, or, or uh, you know, get in the way of regulators or do things they don't want you to do. Um, and, and I wish that more people kind of saw that side. Oh, Pomp, if you were not aware of the history of Binance, they have been officially booted from three countries. China, Japan, and Hong Kong for not complying with regulations and operating illegally. Then they moved to the most honest and ethical place in Europe with no corruption, poverty, or scandals, Malta. That was a sarcastic chip off the old block joke if you couldn't tell. Speaking of Malta, let us now listen into one of the things I found interesting in the interview. So blockchain.info back then was also a company that had no offices, no bank accounts, and of the uh, 18 people that we built, they were spread out around, I don't know, like 12 countries. So very similar to Binance today. Yes, just like blockchain.info back in the day, Binance has no offices, no bank accounts, and you guessed it, is a shell company. Maybe that is why you and your good old buddy Justin Sun and his crypto company Tron are in the exact same location. Just shell companies with no real people working there, as it was the only place that would take you guys in. Or maybe it's so CZ and Justin can be close to each other. I'm talking real close. Well, since we are talking about Binance and CZ, that pesky old Chico Crypto YouTuber is once again digging up the dirt on Binance. But this time it doesn't involve Tron 
but involves another Chinese cryptocurrency, NEO. Chico was contacted by another cryptocurrency project, BlockNet, who received an application from Binance to be listed on their exchange, which included very intrusive questions about their technology. It was concluded that this was opposition research to help Binance build their Binance chain and their Binance DEX, which is going to be released sometime this year. Well, BlockNet dug into the contributors of the document, as it was a Google Doc, and it was found out that NEO co-founder Eric Zhang was helping Binance ask questions about BlockNet's technology. Yes, NEO's upgrades have been going so slow because the main developer isn't even working full-time on the project, and the other founder, De Hongfei, has been flying around the world tied to CZ's leash. Woof. In response to this, Binance went after Chico Crypto. Yesterday, he got his personal email bombed with thousands of messages. I'm talking thousands. And come to find out, someone had IP spoofed him and broke into that email, and using the bomb to hide that they were trying to get into his other accounts, like Twitter, his online banking, and of course, YouTube. Luckily, Chico caught the sewer rats dead in their tracks before any harm could be done. Now for some crypto market price updates. We will turn our attention to special reporter Rumpel Shilskin. Rumpel, how do the crypto markets look out there? Well, Chip, the markets are looking great. Bitcoin broke through the 4K level, but has since come back under almost every crypto market went green for a second. But the 4K resistance for Bitcoin is very, very important and the rejection isn't good. Reminds me of asking Sally Sue to the prom back in high school. Back to you, Chip. Thanks, Ruppel. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for tonight. I will see you next time because Chip is checking out.